I now call to order the June 25th, 2024 regular meeting of the Town of Wellington Board of Trustees, time being 6.30 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Mr. Clerk, make it a roll call, please. Trustee Daly. Present. Trustee Cannon. Here. Trustee Moyer. Here. Trustee Teets. Trustee Wiegand. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Mason. Here. Mayor Shosi. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you. Are there any amendments to the agenda this evening? No. Any conflicts of interest with the agenda this evening? No. All right, now it's time for public comment. Members of the public wishing to speak, please approach the podium, um, state your name for the public record. You'll be given three minutes. Actually, I have a visual to pass on as well, Craig. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, did you get one? Uh, I've not yet, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Sorry, I only brought the one copy. Oh. So, yeah, oh, okay. so we can. All the way around. I, I, Sorry about that. No worries. No, you're fine. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the Wellington Board of Trustees, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. My name is Van Dougherty with Vape Colorado and Port Collins, and I am here to discuss the proposed use of the property at 3738 Cleveland Avenue for a vape and unique retail shop. This property holds significant potential for both my business and the town of Wellington. Firstly, I want to express my personal connection to Wellington. I actually grew up on Hayes Circle. My mom still lives on Hayes Circle. I went to Wellington Middle School, and albeit I live in Fort Collins now, Wellington is still my hometown. I am deeply invested in its growth and success, which is why I believe this proposal is beneficial for the town's expansion. The initiative is not just my vision, uh, but has the backing of local residents and businesses. They recognize its potential to contribute positively to Wellington's economy, by joining the local e-commerce or local commerce community and participating in town events, we aim to integrate fully and support our community. The economic benefits of this proposal are substantial. Our current store generates significant city sales tax revenue, which could greatly benefit Wellington if we establish our business here. Increased tax revenue and foot traffic can help invigorate the local economy in the downtown area, keeping business within Wellington rather than having it go out to neighboring areas. Furthermore, there is widespread support for this venture from both Larimer County residents and Wyoming residents. They recognize the difference between a retail shop like ours that also sells vape products versus a marijuana retailer. Our business strictly focuses on vape supplies and unique retail items with no THC products sold. The current land use code lacks guidelines for vape retailers, and we are currently being compared to marijuana retailers, which has limited our options to unsuitable C3 zones with either undeveloped properties, properties that are way too large, or properties that are simply too far away. Instead of the more appropriate, 3738 Cleveland Ave in the C2 zone. This property at 3738 Cleveland Ave has been vacant for well over a year now, and we are ready to make significant improvements, transforming a long empty building into a thriving hub that will beautify and revitalize this part of the downtown. Currently, there are no viable locations to rent in the C3 zone, making this property uniquely suitable to our needs. My conclusion here is allowing the use of 3738 Cleveland Ave in a C2 zone district area for a vape and unique retail shop will bring numerous benefits to Wellington from the uh, economic growth and increased tax revenue to revitalizing a vacant property. This initiative has the potential to make a significant positive impact. I urge the board to support our proposal for the benefit of our local community. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Excuse me, can I ask, have you uh, filed any, is this pending before the Planning Commission or the Board of Adjustment at this time? Not yet. I've been working kind of with uh, the Town of Wellington's planning and zoning and only recently found out that this property would not be suitable for tobacco sales of any kind because okay. in the municipal code, there is no information regarding tobacco sales and it's up to- But there's the no pending application at this time. Correct. Point. Thank you. Thank you. Just make sure. 
sure you put your name on that piece of paper. I'll just go with it. <clears throat> Hello. Can I ask if you will be filing an application with the planning and planning commission or the board of adjustment on this? If you're going to be filing for a variance or an appeal of a decision, we actually can't be bringing this before the board of trustees at this time. This needs to be done through the proper proper channels. This board may serve as a, an appeal or may have to vote on a recommendation of the planning commission. So all of this would be considered ex parte communication. So anything regarding this, which will be bring, brought before a town board, the appropriate town board, which would be to start with the planning commission or potentially the board of adjustment, it needs to start there. Because this board may have to hear it later, they need to not hear information at this time. These are considered ex parte communications. So if it's regarding this matter, I, I really would recommend um, we not continue public comment on this at this time. The biggest reason that we were going this route mm -hmm. or doing the appeal is just because it's a weird gray area since we would it's, talk aviation. The, the, it, it, either way, it starts with another body of the town. And so this board really can't hear this at this time. So that, I, I understand where you're at, but really um, just because this board either may have to do an appeal or uh, vote on a recommendation of a lower body that's called the quasi judicial hearing. Um, this board needs to avoid ex parte communications. And so um, start through the proper channels. Um, just at this time, this board can't hear this matter. Thank you. All right, no more further public comment. <clears throat> All right, next, uh, I have a proclamation for Parks and Recreation Month. Um, will the members of the Pros Board um, and staff this evening please come forward to receive the proclamation on behalf of the town. Uh, whereas parks and recreation are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the town of Wellington, and whereas parks and recreation promote health and wellness, improving the physical and mental health of people who live near parks. And whereas parks and recreation promote time spent in nature, which positively impacts mental health by increasing cognitive performance and well-being and alleviating illnesses such as depression. And whereas parks and recreation encourage physical activities by providing space for popular sports, hiking trails, and many other activities designed to promote active lifestyles. And whereas parks and recreation education activities such as youth sports, a uh, form of integral component of youth development, oh, form an integral part of youth development in our community. Sorry, I got lost there. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has design, uh, designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and whereas the town of Wellington record, recognizes the numerous benefits derived from parks and recreation programs. Now, therefore, I, Kayla Shosey, Mayor of the town of Wellington, Colorado, do hereby proclaim the month of July as Parks and Recreation Month. Get you to stand for. You want to shut the door? Please and stand in front of the podium if you would. Come closer to me a little bit. Closer please. to you. Yes, please. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Good to go. Okay, that, I think that'll work great. Excellent. Right. On three, ready? One, two, three. Good, perfect. Thank What's you. your picture? Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I now close the regular meeting and open the liquor license authority board, time being six forty PM. Uh, Mr. Clerk, will you please read the title for item C1? C1, Special Event Liquor Permit Application, Sparchtoberfest. Thank you, sir. Um, since this is a special event liquor permit application, we will hold a public hearing on this item. 
Uh, do members of the board wish to disclose any conflicts of interest or ex parte communications on this application? No. Uh, will staff please introduce this item? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and board. I'm Ethan Moose, your town clerk. Pleasure to be with you this evening. Sparks Toberfest has submitted an application for a special event liquor permit, and we accepted the application as complete on uh, the 13th of this month. Staff have subsequently verified the applicant is exempt from sales tax licensure as a nonprofit corporation and that the applicant possesses a certificate of good standing issued by the Colorado Secretary of State. Uh, the applicant has received permission permission to use the property from the owner and has provided an, an event diagram and safety plan for the three dates listed in the application. Notice of a public hearing on this application has been posted on the premises as required by applicable regulation. We recommend that you hold a public hearing on this application to determine the sufficiency of the applicant's safety plan and control measures. And second, whether the issuance of this, uh, of this permit would be injurious to the public welfare because of the nature of the special event its location within the community or the failure of the applicant in the past uh, and a past special event to conduct the event in compliance with applicable law. If the board finds that the safety plan and control measures are sufficient and, the app, and that the application would not be injurious to the public welfare, as previously mentioned, then we recommend approval of this application. Thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to give a presentation? I'm Linda Stoddard. I'm the chair of the Sparge Tobey Race Foundation. Um, with this, we, this is our fourth year having a 5K, our third year with a gravel bike ride and a food bank, a food truck rally. Um, uh, our safety plan follows Wellington Fire Protection District uh, guidelines. So we submitted a safety plan for inclement weather emergencies, um, evacuation, evacuations, um, all of that is in, is in our safety plan. Um, as far as security, American Legion Wellington Post 176 provides general security. All of our entrances are staffed with TIPS certified um, volunteers to verify IDs and blue bracelet people who are coming in um, who are of age and can drink beer. Um, we also have uh, spot, uh, units 101 and 102 for in case of ev evacuation purposes where people can go for shelter if shelter is needed for any reason at all. A couple years ago, we had a big windstorm and we had to jam everybody into, into those um, and it works, it works great. Um, another thing I want to just address is our uh, accessibility. We are fully accessible on the southwest corner of Wine Cup in, in our property. Um, there is a place with no curb and a sloped entrance. On the northwest corner, we have a temporary ramp that we bring in every event and put that over the curbs um, so people can get into the field from either way. And the tap room is accessible from both entrances. It also has an ADA restroom in the tap room. If we get to 300 and we need three on, on another ADA, we will rent another one from Republic. Questions you have for me? Questions from the board? Well, thank you, Linda. Okay. Um, I will now open this for a public hearing um, on this item, time being 6.43 p.m. I'm just gonna state it for the record. Members of the public wishing to comment on this item, please sign in the sheet behind the podium, state your name for the record. You'll be given three minutes to speak. I now close the public hearing of this item, time being 6.44 p.m. Um, are there any closing comments from staff? No, Mr. Mayor. Does the board wish to deliberate further on this item? Uh, I wanted to extend a thank you to Sparta Hopper Fest for the amazing events that they do to bring community together with amazing causes. Um, I've been to many of those events as well, and they've been run incredibly well and safely. So. Thank you again for bringing this back fourth year. Can't believe it. I would like to also mirror those those sentiments by uh, Trustee Daly. Uh, the Sparse Toberfest has been a, a great addition to Wellington, uh, to our community. It gives uh, uh, people in our community and even outside of the community a chance to get together with their neighbors, with their friends, and uh, and celebrate in our hometown. So, thank you for what you're doing.
Do I hear a motion on this item? I move that we approve the special event permit for Sparge Toberfest. Second. Mr. Clerk, make a roll call, please. Trustee Cannon. Yes. Trustee Moyer. Yes. Trustee Daly. Yes. Trustee Wiegand. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Mason. Yes. Mayor Shosi. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries unanimously and the application is approved. Thank you. Uh, I now close the liquor license authority board and reopen the regular meeting. Time being 6.45 p.m. Mr. Clerk, will you please read the titles of the items on the consent agenda? D1, June 11, 2024, regular meeting minutes. D2, resolution number 29-2024, a resolution adjusting appropriations for the town of Wellington, Colorado for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2024 and ending on December 21, 2024. D3, resolution number 31-2024, a resolution of the town of Wellington, Colorado, considering a contract for senior services. Thank you. Do I hear a motion on the consent agenda? I so move. Second. Mr. Clerk, may you roll call, please. Trustee Cannon. Yes. Trustee Daly. Yes. Trustee Moyer. Yes. Trustee Wiegand. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Mason. Yes. Mayor Shosi. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries and the consent agenda is approved. Thank you. On to reports, Mr. Dan Sapienza. Do you have any reports for us this evening, Mr. Town Attorney? It's been a quick meeting so far, so I was just typing a couple <laughs> notes for myself. So maybe I can stretch this meeting out a little bit. Um, I won't, it won't be too long, but I actually do have a report tonight. So, um, so uh, I attended the uh, Colorado Municipal League conference with all of you uh, trustees um, over the last week, and I wanted to give a couple updates on, on that and a couple other items and the things that popped into my head that I want to bring to the board's attention um, uh, as a result of that. Uh, first of all, there's a number of new bills, and I, I mentioned this, you know, about a month ago. That we'll be getting a good list of the legislation um, that affects the town of Wellington out to the board uh, uh, soon. Um, but the CML conference had some really good, good presentations, and I've already been following up this week with staff saying we need to address this. We need to put this on our calendar. So there's a lot of things that will be coming in front of this board um, that will need to, to make changes to our code um, in in um, in response to those uh, bills passed by the General Assembly. Um, also talked with a number of attorneys about Senate Bill uh, 24131 while I was there. That's the, the legislation that um, prohibits the carrying of firearms within government buildings. That was discussed at the work session last week. I believe Town of Severance has either adopted an ordinance opting out portion of their buildings um, at this time, or they've uh, at least considered it. But but I've even talked with a number of other attorneys from around the state. So I'll um, use that and making sure that, that bill is, uh, or that ordinance that we'll bring forward at the next meeting is is, is good. Um, last week, you should have received, not, was it last week that we got the Bob Mm-hmm. Last week, I believe you were handed a, a copy of- Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Sometime recently, you were handed a copy of a, a, a publication from Colorado Municipal League called Bob's Rules. Um, Bob's Rules is rules of order for local governments, um, specifically written by a Colorado attorney in, in conjunction with the Colorado Municipal League. Um, I think it'd be a really good book for you all to read. Um, and I think it'd be a good book for this board to adopt as the official rules of order. Um, and I think we'll have a later work session to discuss that. At this time, the Town of Wellington Board of Trustees operates under Robert's rules, according to our ordinances, um, as supplemented by a certain version of Bob's rules. This is confusing, and that's one of the things we want to change. Um, so as you read through Bob's Rules, the publication that was just released last, last year, that is considered kind of the final version. It's gone through a number of iterations over the last decade or so, and that we'd like to adopt that version as the rules. Right now we have sort of a hodgepodge, um, and it's confusing where we have Robert's Rules as supplemented by Bob's Rules because they're not the same. So when they conflict, we have to resort back to, back to Robert's Rules because that's within our, within our ordinance. For instance, just now, Trustee Cannon used a, uh, a motion, so moved. The so moved motion isn't allowed under Robert's rules, but it is under Bob's rules. So, and it's something that this board has done and certainly it's within the practice. So um, with that book, you know, read it in your free time. I uh, you know we all love rules of order. Um, it's relatively digestible. If you have any questions about it, I'd love to talk about it. At, at a later date, we'll have a work session talking about those rules and talking about kind of the next steps because I'd like to change the ordinance to make sure that it's clear what rules this board is, is operating under. Um, so that's a good one. I will be sending out after this meeting uh, another publication from Colorado Municipal League. They're just the best right now because it's on my mind. And this is the Home Rule Handbook. 
And, you know, there's been a lot of conversation with this board about uh, moving to home rule or considering it. And then the Colorado Municipal League has a publication called Home Rule Handbook that has everything from the history of home rule to best practices for moving in that direction. So it might give some ideas of things to consider as this board considers home rule. I'll get that PDF sent out um, this week. I'd recommend you read that. I think there's a work session at the end of July with Severance's town board. So it'd be a great primer. Um, so you're ready for that meeting. So you maybe can come to that meeting with some really good questions. I've been through it a number of times as well. So uh, or the book, not the process. Um, but if you have questions, let me know. And finally, quasi-judicial quasi -judicial hearing training. As was noted this evening, we have a lot of interesting quasi-judicial items that might come before this board and come before other bodies of the town. Um, I want to, I'm, we're already talking about scheduling at this time. I'm going to put on a, a work session, be a joint work session between this board, our planning commission, our board of adjustment, and pretty much anybody else who wants to come. And the entire purpose of that is to learn about the quasi-judicial rules. Um, I think it's it's time we need to we kind of lay a foundation for everybody to, to, to get on the same page with how that works and answer questions. I, I realize uh, Trustee Moyer had some questions for me and I realized we didn't do a real in-depth training on, on that specific process as you join the Board of Trustees. It's important for how this board operates and also our others. So um, when we get that scheduled and that'll be a, I think a, a really good use of everybody's time. So um, I look forward to it. That's my report. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Garcia. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor and Trustees. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to attend the CML conference with all of you. I was so incredibly proud to represent the town of Wellington at that conference and just loved hearing all the conversations after the sessions and during the sessions sometimes about what we were learning and, and watching us all take notes and, and wanting to bring more to Wellington. And we have a great opportunity now as we roll into strategic planning and things like that to to really start taking some of those initiatives that we've talked about for years and we've heard about over this past week and maybe you know find a find a path forward with some of those initiatives including that home rule piece um, so just thank you um, learned a lot still putting together my notes because <laughs> there was a lot um, but thank you thank you all the reports from staff are in the packet so if you have questions, you can refer to those. Uh, board reports. Start with uh, Trustee Moyer. Um, I want to say that we had a really enlightening time um, at CML. It was great for me as a first timer. Um, even though I don't like that tag, to be able to just have those conversations and um, sit in the sessions. I came away very encouraged and inspired and enthusiastic about um, the future of Wellington and all of the great work that we can all do together. So thank you all for being there. Trust me. Don't have any specific reports today, but I did appreciate the opportunity to go to CML and uh, listen to uh, the elected officials of Louisville and how they approached the disaster they had. Really enlightening. So, I mean, it was just good seeing uh, the different perspectives out there on that, too. So, there are so many good uh, programs that they had there. So, I appreciate the opportunity. I do have one quick question for our attorney. Uh, we have not opted out, right? And uh, you probably need to know, I guess, that if anybody, because it is currently right now, you can have concealed weapon here or actually open carry. As of our next meeting, that will be a misdemeanor, correct? That is correct. It was right. July 1st. Right. So uh, when would we be expecting to have something where we can actually opt out officially? At the very first meeting in July. It'll be it'll be on the first meeting. Okay. Yeah. But if you carry at that one, you're going to be against the law right there. Okay. That's correct. That's kind of what I was thinking. I just wanted to confirm that. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Daly. 
Uh, one of the major themes of CML this year, we're talking about civility and civility starts here. Um, I wanted to welcome everybody to also participate in the pledge, um, the individual civility pledge, um, and maybe consider that this is something that we adopt from the perspective of the board or um, share with our community. But this is what it, it says. It says civility starts here, guiding principles. Listen as intently as you speak. Focus on issues, not individuals. Distinguish between fact and opinion. Get curious instead of furious. Acknowledge knowledge. Own your intentions and your impact. Seek common ground and be a role model. Uh, there's more details on this, of course, but it is uh, a beautiful pledge and it stands for all that is good to make us productive and functional and good for Wellington. So I have already signed this individually. I suggest that everybody else do so as well. Um, and actually goes on to a register within CML to indicate who from which municipality is participating in this pledge as well. So it would be great for us to represent as the town of Wellington. Um, outside of that, at CML, I learned a lot of very alarming concerning things that we need to consider in the very near future. And I'm excited for us to uh, deep dive into those. But one of the fun things we learned is we went to um, a, a session on historical preservation and the potential for dollars to be available to celebrate and revive historical events um, and potentially have funds to do that going forward. So maybe well around that, I'm not quite sure. Yes, but we'll that. So um, we're definitely going to be, Lowry and I, uh, Trustee Moyer and I, um, we're very excited about that and we're seeking more information on it to see if we can uh, use those funds for amazing good times in Wellington and bring back a little bit of our history. So, um, but tons of other things learned. I know we have a lot of time that we need to um, download all those kind of items, but I'm really happy that we take this investment in ourselves to learn from best practices all across Colorado and, um, and use all those resources that we have available to us. Um, and then, of course, everybody join us for Fourth of July festivities, where you see Wellington at its best. Thanks. Thank you, Chris Keenan. Thank you. Um, I want to echo the comments about Colorado Municipal League Conference. I've been going to that since 2017. Um, it's a great place to learn, you know, in a in a in a setting with experts who are talking about uh, how government works and different ways that you can address different issues and so forth. But one of the things that I've always enjoyed most about it is, is meeting those elected officials and those staff members from other communities from all across the state. Uh, there's so much in common uh, between these communities um, and understanding and talking to, to these uh, elected officials about how their community addressed this issue. Um, to me, I get a lot of, out of that because you like to think as being a past manager, you you understand a lot of the the resources to get out of that. But there's some great ideas out there, so I really enjoyed that communication with uh, with other elected officials. I enjoyed reuniting with um, with old friends and comrades that I've had for for years. Um, there was some significant things that I came out of uh, the CML uh, conference with as well. Uh, the one thing that struck me was um, some of the legislation that's uh, being proposed for the November ballot, like Initiative 50 um, and other legislations, you know, Senate bills and so forth. Um, I can't wait until the home rule work session uh, because quite frankly, I think we need as a community to protect ourselves from the type of legislation that can come from Denver that can devastate a community. And having that, uh, the, the home rule protections in place uh, is a great way to do that and and uh, and gives us a little bit more of a, a leg to stand on when determining uh, local control versus statewide concerns. Uh, something else that, uh, that I got out of this, uh, you know, I'm passionate about uh, community development. I'm passionate about commercial growth and smart growth and doing it right. Uh, I want Wellington to be a, a, a community that encourages growth. And there was a session on uh, the roles of elected officials in economic development. Um, and as I was going through this, I just I just filled a page with 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 notes and so forth. 
about how elected officials can put policy in place uh, they can open those doors, provide those those uh, those ways to quickly move through our our process uh, to get uh, uh, to get an idea through a plan and shovel in the ground so that they can become profitable sooner. Um, and there's some uh, some great information there that, uh, and I have a lot of experience in economic development as well. And these are things that that you talk about, but it's, you really need to start working about, okay, how do we get an approval process down to 90 days? How do we uh, uh, streamline some of this? What about workforce development? Uh, the infrastructure to support that. You know, what are our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to a commercial development and so forth? So, I mean, there's a lot of good information in there, and I would hope that uh, after our strategic plan uh, that we might can find some time. I know we're going through budget and season and so forth but uh, find some time to have a good discussion about how we can, we can affect policy in our community to promote that kind of commercial and, and, uh, and economic growth. Um, and the last thing I wanna point out, uh, I had a good conversation with the representatives from the National League of Cities. Um, now, if you think Colorado Municipal League was a great session, you know, wait till you go to a National League of Cities conference when you're getting people from all over the United States, again, sharing the same kind of problems that, that we might have, and but they face it from different perspectives because the laws are different, the environment's different and so forth. Uh, membership in the National League of Cities is fairly inexpensive for a town of our size. I think they quoted me somewhere around $1,200, $1,300 or something like that. Uh, but it would give us an opportunity to tap into that pool of resources that's currently not available to us. Um, and I would encourage us maybe to look at uh, considering membership in that National League of Cities and maybe even for somebody to attend the National League of Cities conference in next year's budget. So, but I had a great time. Uh, one last thing, uh, there was a golf tournament by the Chamber of Commerce on uh, on Saturday. It was a wonderful time. It was great to see uh, some of our members of our board uh, joining the team and having a good time out there. Uh, I think you did great, even though you got the last place trophy. I think you did great. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And you know what? I, I enjoy um, uh, that partnership between the town and the Chamber of Commerce and the community. So it was good to see that team out there. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> Well, I'm not going to comment on the uh, Chamber of Commerce golf tournament uh, and my participation in that. Um, <laughs> always, always have a great time playing with these guys, though, and I had a lot of fun out there. So, uh, thank you to the uh, Chamber. Um, also, just want to say, uh, you know, really appreciated being with you guys at CML. Had a great time out there. Everything from the legislative updates that I happen to uh, attend with uh, Mr. Sapienza. I know for a lot of folks, that stuff's pretty dry, but those are the type of things that I'm very much interested in. And even up to uh, uh, some of Centennial Colorado's more interesting pickleball regulations. So that was always, always good stuff down there. So I uh, had a great time at CML, but um, uh, very much look forward to our work session regarding home rule. I think the Colorado General Assembly maybe is not doing uh, many smaller municipalities a lot of favors this year. So I think it will be interesting for us to have that discussion and uh, once we get to it, I think I'll have a lot of questions for that, so. Yeah, I, I don't have any more report other than I enjoy working alongside each and every one of you and uh, look forward to what we can get accomplished over these next yeah. year and eight months together, at least. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got. And uh, 4th of July next week, uh, be prepared for that. Um, we're gonna have a float, we're gonna have a float. So uh, might need some extra hands putting that together. Put on that out there. Be around all weekend. Um, that's all I got. Um, having no further business, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Mr. Clerk, may you roll call, please. Trustee. Trustee Daly. Yes. Trustee Moyer. Yes. Trustee Cannon. Yes. Trustee Wiegand. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Mason. Yes. Mayor Shosey. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, no. I think it's a tie.
Oh, yeah, I now adjourn this meeting of the Wellington Board of Trustees, time being 7.05 p.m.